Mom, isn't it called a uh, McDonald's storage? Yeah. yeah. McDonald's storage. Uh, it's just just down the road. It's actually pretty close, which is good. And uh, we're just gonna see what I have there. <laughs> An unsuspecting self-storage unit contains This is also stuff that was in our garage, but then my hobby took over. It's actually a Montgomery Ward branded Hoover Power Vac. It's an old shop vac. This was like the second Hoover Elite. And this is a vacuum that I wanted so bad for Christmas again one year. This Hoover convertible right here doesn't run. Bissell right here works fine. It's just I don't really have a need for it right now, and I don't want it in my house right now. Myself and a lot of other collectors is that we like satisfaction when we vacuum. We like to either see our vacuum picking up dirt, as in like, you know, off the floor. We like to see like either a bag inflate when you turn it on, or you like we like to see the dirt flying around inside the vacuum. Whenever we go into Sears or a place that sold vacuums, he would have to go and look at the vacuum cleaners. We would spend hours, I hated to take him shopping because we would spend hours looking at these vacuum cleaners. He wanted to play with the vacuum cleaners rather than you know, going to a park or something. So we'd go to the local vacuum store and became very good friends with them. And I thought, well, this can't be all that bad. He can vacuum for me. Over the years, I've decided his future wife will either hate my guts or love me because of his vacuum hobby. But I just, if he's interested in it, it's better than, than collecting some of the other things kids collect. And he learns stuff. So I've encouraged him ever since he really started. And as a vacuum collector, you might be able to guess what my garage looks like. These are the machines that are either awaiting restoration or I just need to store here. <laughs> or machines that I'm looking to get rid of. It's a three car garage, but all we can store is one car and a boat. And these are modern vacs, old vacs. You could say that this is sort of a vacuum graveyard. I mean, a lot of the machines in here do work. I just don't use them that often. Um, some of them are just kind of toys for me that I just kind of play around with. How do you play with a vacuum? Well, you vacuum with it. You just kind of look at it. You you know, take out the filters and everything, and you see what's inside it. It's kind of the same thing with a toy, like just a regular toy. I've counted about 98 in the house, and I'm sure I've missed two, and I've gotten some more, so it's probably about 105 in the house right now. And that's not counting in the attic either, so, and in storage, that probably adds up more too. So, I, it's kind of up in the air, but I'm pretty sure it's close to 150. Let's just say my room is so small, well, my room's so full that they start spewing out into the hallway. These are the machines that I don't want to put in the garage just because I want to keep them a little bit nicer. Like, some of these are kind of unique. This is the same model that my mom's mom had, my grandmother. And uh, sadly, I never met her, but um, this is the same machine that my mom remembers vacuuming with when she was little because she did all the vacuuming for the house. So this machine has a lot of, you know, good memories for my mom and therefore a lot of good memories for me. Continuing into my room. This is where I keep my favorites. And I mean my favorites. You know, I'll admit, yes, I collect an appliance. I, I can understand how it would be kind of strange for a lot of people, you know, it'd be interesting to people, it'd be 
different to people that, you know, I just collect these things that most people would really not pay much attention to in their day-to-day -day life. It's just this thing that, you know, for like 20 minutes a day enters your life and then exits. Well, actually, it's my, my dad's business, our dad and Kathy's business, my stepmom. Been in the shopping center for 17, 18 years. Basically, I just came to help him out um, about 10 years ago and never left. <laughs> so. What's the difference between these two? I'll help customers if they come in because I can ring them up. Scott doesn't like to ring up customers yet, but I can do that. Sometimes I'll go do something else and come back and get Scott because he loves to stay here. Wow. I'm kind of impressed, actually. Everybody's got to have their hobbies, and uh, he, he really does enjoy bikes. It's, yeah, it's, it's a little different for sure. But um, he's brought business here. It's cool to see him interact with the customers, um, telling them about everything. I mean, he's sold vacuums. He pretty much can do it all, you know, as far as the customer's aspect. He does, I think he does a lot of good stuff for the store, you know, so it's kind of, it's good to have him. And then this was actually what the vacuum store gave me as a Christmas gift, this little GE two-in-one awesome. thing that was at Walmart that I had been wanting. <laughs> this is of me playing with a bunch of little hand vacs they had. Horrible. This is the first article of me. Yeah, see, he has all his rainbows lined up. Oh, here they call you Georgetown's 10-year-old vacuum expert. Oh, <laughs> I didn't remember that part. <laughs> People will see him in the paper and then they'll start calling. Is Scott there? I need to ask him a question about vacuum cleaners. What kind of vacuum should I get? Pretty dusty, but it runs. It sounds... I've had it all these years. And then after my grandmother passed away, and I've had it at a, in a shed up at Lake Buchanan, and I saw it, the article in the newspaper, and so I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if he could use that old vacuum cleaner because it's just going to get dumped in the trash. I have no idea how old the vacuum is, but I am now 70 years old, and she was using it when I was a little girl in the 1940s. I'm hoping you can find out, and please let me know. I might add that I also bought my very own new PowerPool Hoover in the 80s, which I use in Austin. Hoover is a great product. <laughs> Yay. Well, I just thought, thought he might want to know the history yeah, on it or I something. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, and I'll put it in a scrapbook because I think it's important. Yeah. And he can tell the story about it when he takes it to the convention. Well, thank you for... You're sure welcome. Thank you for and, the Hoover. Uh-huh. Yes, thank you so much for thinking of Scott. Okay, if I can... But actually, it's funny. A lady came in today dropping off an Electrolux to be repaired, and she's like, you're not the Georgetown vacuum kid, are you? And she was like... And I told her I was, and she was like, oh, well, I'm so glad to meet you. She gave me a hug, so that gave me kind of a weird sense of being a celebrity. <laughs> not so much this, but... Like my friends here. Hey Scott. Hey Ben. Hey Scott. I got my vacuum for college. I really want Scott to show me how to use it. Actually, I asked him to. <laughs> he comes over and he there's a vacuum we have that's like 20 years old, 40, 30 years old. He covets my vacuum from there. Scott, we want to see the rainbow. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Let me get the hose. <laughs> and it actually acts as sort of a combination squeegee if you just press down. You can hear like, you can hear the difference. Is the water dirty yet? It probably is. Mm, I'm excited. So. Not that bad, but... That's disgusting. Yeah. I would never yeah. drink that. <laughs> And you can see there's already grit and sand at the yeah. bottom of it and everything. 
So it's nice and murky. So when are you coming over to do my carpets and my tile? <laughs> okay. His room yet? I'm yeah, gonna, pick, I'm gonna take a picture of him. Ben did not like the fact that Scott was picked on and stood up for him a, a couple of times and. And I was proud of Ben for doing that. You know, I think that's a cool thing. And also, you know, Texas is a, is a pretty uniform environment. And I came from a different place. And I like the fact that people are different. It's the quirky people of the world that advance the world, that bring us art, that bring us music, that bring us life, that makes worth, life worth living, you know. That works better than our vacuum. It does. I can guarantee you that. It's crazy how well a lot of the old stuff works. It's like... Why did we get rid of it? <laughs> like, the first time I came over to his house, we, like, did not want to do any of the same things. It was basically, let's go play with the vacuum. No, I want to go do this, but it's fun. You're trying to make, like, a bomb out of, like, vinegar and milk or something. I mean, everyone has some kind of hobby or obsession. Some people collect fuzzy dice. That's something weird, but... I mean, everyone is something special to them, Scott's his vacuums, and he went out and basically went for his ambition. I think it's kind of cool how he's the only person I've ever known who would actually go out and do what they wanted, even though everyone else was against it. I mean, Scott's way more mature, honestly, than any kid I think I've ever met. I can't keep going with a hobby because it's like, oh, I'll try this, but then it gets boring and you get tired of it and you just drop it. I mean, Ben, there were thousands and thousands of vacuums made, vacuum different models made out of all brands. This is a hobby that'll keep me for all my life. Good point. Because it's not baseball or football or the usual young boy hobbies, uh, he's, he's taken some flack for it, but he seems to have learned how to shrug that off and it hasn't dissuaded him from keeping up his intellectual energy about it. And as I said, the, the, you know, the, the breadth and the depth of, of the interest has continued to grow with him. My brother got a guitar when I was seventh grade and he didn't want to mess with it. So I started playing with it, just figuring it out from scratch. And I got interested in how the materials are configured, the woods and the metals and the pickups and the amps and all that stuff. And how do, how do they get a certain sound? So. This one is a Gibson ES-1275. You gotta have your stairway to heaven guitar. For 40 years or more, I've been just collecting or accumulating guitars, and my real ambition is to be a, a banjo, and a bass player, and a dobro player, but I haven't gotten that far yet. This is a 54 Les Paul. So for Scott, it's a Rainbow or a Hoover. For me, it's these things, but I think it all comes from the same place mentally or intellectually, if you will. It's a matter of letting your curiosity drive you if, if you're really curious, and uh, it's hard to stop it. And I don't know why you want to, really. So whether it's guitars or vacuums or anything else, I think most of us get captivated by something in that way. What do you think he's going to do with his interest? I think he'll be an engineer. Maybe with the space program or... Because the space program, people don't realize all the vacuums that are involved with the there are space tons. shuttle and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the other, and the International Space Station. They have to vacuum daily. Otherwise, their um, filters will get clogged with the flakes of skin and stuff. People don't know that. And the toilet is a vacuum. Scott uh. met astronaut Rich Clifford, and the first thing he asked him was, can you tell me how vacuums are used in space? <laughs> and that's what he told us. This guy was only like, what, six or seven, maybe. Honestly, I still can't really explain why I like these things. I mean, if I didn't collect vacuums, I wouldn't really have a hobby. I mean, I wouldn't have much of a hobby, or I wouldn't have a hobby that, you know, trillions of other kids do. I mean, it, yeah, it is a part of me, and I would not be me without it. Well, this is definitely something. Mom, this is definitely something we gotta save. It's Kenmore Dynamite. 
These are relatively rare, especially because it's Kenmore branded. That's really, really something. This is a rare bird, Mom. This is a rare bird. Looks like it has the cloth bag inside full of dirt. That's nice. Um, <laughs> and with a crevice tool. That's it. But that's still... And that's still great. I never thought I'd ever find one of these. I have a black... I've seen a black one of these in a 1990 uh, catalog from Sears that I have, so... Anyways, at least I know what attachments to look for, thanks to that catalog. Anyways, everything else here is pretty much plastic junk.